Hello, Joe O'Connell, Sandpiper Pump. Today we're going to show you how to put a wet end kit in our SO5 non metallic. Sitting on the bench, we have examples of our Sandpiper Genuine Parts wet end kit and air end kit. The rebuild you're going to see today is accurate in man, method, and machine, but for video purposes, some parts of the work performed have been condensed in time. At any point during the presentation, please pause this video until you've completed any phase of the process. The pump we're using today in this presentation has been built new and is considerably easier to work with than a pump that's been used in a process. Additional time may be required in the preparation and separation of parts and components during the rebuild. While the pumps are different in size and flow, the techniques and procedures used in the rebuild of the SO5 are also applied to the commonality of the SO7 and the S10. Identifying which kit is required for your repair has become easier on newer pumps with the permanently affixed metal serial number tag that now indicates the wet end and air end kit information for the pump. Kit information can also be found in the service and operating manual. Sandpiper Genuine Replacement Parts, Wet End and Air End Kits provide a bill of material of the components included in the kit. All items included in the kits are components that Sandpiper recommends replacing when rebuilding a pump. The pump we are using today is an example of the ease of kit installation. Always consult your respective service and operating manual before performing any maintenance on your pump. Service and operating manuals include composite repair parts drawings, repair parts list, and torque specifications. For service and operating manuals or more information, visit us on the web at www.sandpiperpump.com. Always remember that safety is the highest priority. When working on or around any equipment, always follow the correct safety procedures. Always read and follow the safety warnings and instructions in the service manual before any work is started on the pump. For more information, see the Warren Rupp video on safety at sandpiperpump.com. Our wet end rebuild today is going to consist of diaphragms, check balls, seats, and seals. These are the recommended tools used with the rebuild. While the sizes may change based on the model, the type will remain the same. Torque wrench, ratchet, small slotted screwdriver, needle nose pliers, sockets and or wrenches, 1 half inch, 9 16 inch, 3 quarters inch. Let's get started. For ease of assembly and disassembly today, we're going to be using a 3 8 inch impact gun. Um, we're going to start by taking off the discharge manifold. So. Once you have all the bolts removed, go ahead and take the discharge manifold and set it aside. And you can discard the check balls and the seats. Flip the unit over. You want to go ahead and take the suction manifold off next. Take the suction manifold, set it aside. Remove the seats check balls and you can discard those. Flip the unit up on its side and you want to take off one of the outer chambers. With the outer chamber removed, we now want to loosen the diaphragm assembly. When loosening the diaphragm assembly, you may get the diaphragm rod. That's okay. Pull it out. Set it aside. Flip the unit up and remove the other outer chamber. Take the chamber, diaphragm assembly, set those aside. Next we're going to remove the diaphragm assembly from the diaphragm rod. Today we are using a vise with soft jaws. Soft jaws are utilized to ensure that the shaft is not scarred, scratched, or damaged while it's clamped in the vise. Tighten the rod into the vise and go ahead and remove the assembly from the rod. Then you want to inspect the rod. Make sure there's no deep cuts, gouges, scratches in the rod. 
Next, we're going to disassemble our diaphragm assembly. We want to take the inner plate on our diaphragm assembly and tighten it into the vise lightly. You don't want to tighten the vise too tight, to damage the inner plate. Once you have the inner plate tightened into the vise, go ahead and loosen the outer plate from the assembly and you can discard the old diaphragm. You want to repeat this for both assemblies. Once you have all the components apart, you want to inspect the inner and outer diaphragm plates. Ensure the plates have no sharp edges or scarring on the radius. Plates can be cleaned up with emery paper, crocus cloth, or fine sandpaper. Make sure the radius is maintained during cleanup. Replace if necessary. Now you can open up your wet end kit and set the components out. Take one of the inner plates and place it in the vise. You want the flat face down on the plate. You want the cone side of the plate facing up. And we're going to take our diaphragm. In the SO5 non-metallic, the natural bulge of the diaphragm faces against the inner plate. Then we'll take our outer plate, thread it into the assembly, and then we're going to torque it down to the torque specifications that you find in your service and operating manual. You're going to do this for both assemblies. Once you have the assemblies together, then you can reinstall your soft jaws and tighten your diaphragm rod into the vise. Thread on one of the assemblies onto the rod and torque the assembly to the rod. Next, we want to install one bumper onto the diaphragm rod and we want to apply a light amount of grease onto the rod. On Santaprene pumps, there is a rubber seal that goes behind the Santaprene diaphragm. You want to line that up to the bolt holes in the intermediate, and then you want to install the diaphragm assembly with the rod into the intermediate. Make sure you line up the diaphragm, the seal, and the intermediate bolt holes. Now we can install one of our outer chambers. You want to inspect the outer chamber. Inspect the machine faces and radius of the chamber for damage or material buildup. Scarring scratches or material buildup can be cleaned up by using memory paper, crocus cloth, or fine sandpaper. Ensure the radius on the inside of the chamber is maintained during cleanup. Replace the chamber if necessary. When aligning the outer chamber, be sure that the discharge port faces the nameplate. Get all your bolts threaded in. You can go ahead and tighten those down in a crossing pattern. You want to flip the unit over, install one bumper onto the diaphragm rod, place your seal on the inner chamber, line the bolt hole up, thread the diaphragm assembly onto the rod. Then you want to torque the assembly to the rod. If you do not achieve hole alignment when torquing, you always want to continue tightening to the next bolt hole. You never want to loosen the diaphragm to achieve bolt hole alignment. Once you get the alignment, you can align the rubber seal underneath. and you can reinstall the remaining outer chamber. Again, inspect the outer chamber. 
When aligning the outer chamber, be sure that the discharge port faces the nameplate. Install all your bolts and then you can tighten those down in a crossing pattern. Make sure you tighten them down in a crossing pattern across all eight bolts. Next we're going to replace the seals on our manifold assembly. Go ahead and loosen the bolts from the elbow to the manifold connection. And remove the seal. You can discard this seal. Inspect your components. Check the casting for wear. Check the port for thread integrity. Repair or replace as needed. Emery paper, crocus cloth, or fine sandpaper can be used to clean the manifold up. Install the new seal into the receiver in the manifold. And reinstall your elbow. Well, make sure you do this for both sides. Tighten all the bolts down in a crossing pattern. Next with the unit with the suction side up, we want to install our check balls and our new seats. Seats are non-directional, either face can face up. And take our manifold and install it next. We want to inspect the manifold for scarring damage or material buildup. Check the casting for wear. Check the port for thread integrity. Repair or replace as needed. Emery paper, crocus cloth, or fine sandpaper can be used to clean the manifold up. Orientation of the manifold is based on process requirements and may be reinstalled in either direction. Once you have all the bolts threaded in, you want to tighten them down in a crossing pattern across all eight bolts. Now we can flip the unit over and we'll have to replace the seals on the discharge manifold assembly. Once that's done, we want to inspect the manifold for scarring damage or material buildup. Check the casting for wear. Check the port for thread integrity. Repair or replace as needed. Emery paper, crocus cloth, or fine sandpaper can be used to clean the manifold up. We'll install our seats. Seats are non-directional. Either face can go up. And our check balls. We're ready to tighten our manifold assembly down to our pump. Orientation of the manifold is based on process requirements and may be reinstalled in either direction. Remember to tighten all the bolts down in a crossing pattern across all eight bolts. There may be a gap between the chamber and the elbow. This is okay. The sealing surface is between the seat and the elbow and the seat and the chamber, not between the elbow and the chamber. That completes our wet side rebuild of our SO5 non-metallic. If you're doing a complete rebuild, see our air side video, or for additional information, find us on the web at sandpiperpump.com or contact after sales support at service.warnerup at idexcorp.com. Thanks.